it's the Lace Rom's crew. What? What? It's the Lace Rom's crew. One, two, one, two. What it do? What it do? It's your boy Skeeter Steve, and welcome to another episode of Lace Rom's for the culture and by the culture. <laughs> we are back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Yeah, 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 man. I just wanna know, man. Let y'all know how y'all doing, man. How y'all summer been going? Because all I know, man, it's been real fucking hot out here in Vegas. See, got the arms out once again because, bro, it's hot. It is hot. That's why I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I, I can't wait for low key October to get here once it start cooling down. Because once it start cooling down, bro, time to break out the long sleeves and the sweaters and the hoodies. And I'll be cool with that, though. But anyway, man, I just wanna let y'all know your boy got a Patreon. So go ahead and subscribe to that Patreon. The Patreon is free. And after the fourth month, we will be charging $5 a month. You can pay for Starbucks, Hulu, and Dutch Bros for $5. Go ahead and support your boy for this podcast. because you will be getting all types of good content. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, man, uh, man, a lot has been going on, you know, in the rap world. And just with hip-hop in general, man, a lot has definitely has been going on, bro. I mean, we said it, and I've seen it, man. Um, this Drake and Kendrick shit ain't going to die down. This has been been brewing for a long time, and and I'm shocked that it carried out through the summer, but you know, and and I already called it the Drake stimulus package. It it didn't work, none whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? That song with Sexy Red, trash. That Guanda Delilah, trash. The two songs that he did uh, with with her girl, those are trash. Um. The joint that he did with the house dude, eh, eh. And then him releasing the 100 gig pack. Both of the songs is trash, so, but that housekeeper joint uh, with Lotto. Got a reaction video going to be dropping that soon. Fire. Uh, like, crazy, crazy fire. Going to be dropping that. Like, crazy, crazy fire, though. But, man, I knew it was going to carry out, though. And then, not like us still being played. And it's August and they're still playing it. And I told people that Not Like Us was still going to get played. But, you know, it's it's a lot of hate behind that. And I don't understand the hate behind uh, Not Like Us. Oh, my God. I mean, did nobody say that a couple years ago where every time you got in your car or you're in a club, back-to-back was being played? All it just is, he's just doing the same thing, though, but he did it a little a little bit better than Drake. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Give credit where credit is due. Nonetheless, let's get into this hip-hop shit, man. Let's get into commentary for the culture. You know what I'm saying? A lot has went on. So, Andre 3000 has some words to say in regards of this Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. And he has said, oh, I wish they weren't beefing. I'm all like, the OG of OG said that they wish they weren't beefing. Huh? What? Last time I checked, uh, hip hop was a sport, and you're always going to get battle tested within the culture, with whether it's uh, DJing, whether it's it, whether it's graffiti, where is it breaking, you're going to get battle tested. That's why hip hop always been a sport. So that was just weird and crazy to hear him say that, and also too, he had he said, I got a little sad at a certain point. He admitted. And early rap battles, you had kids in the park rapping against each other. But it's not just people rapping now. You got people with 100 employees. You have livelihoods, empires, companies, deals, and all that could be jeopardized. If you don't have anything to lose, sure, go for it. But if I have already made it, I'm not sure it's even worth it anymore. I got to disagree with that, bro. And the only reason why I disagree with that, because, yes, things do change. Things do evolve. But also, too, when you're an artist or you're a person of the culture, don't put yourself in a situation where the shit can bite you in the ass from five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drake kind of did that. You know, uh, being on stage with the underage girls, this rumor, that rumor, this rumor, that rumor. 
him uh, misusing and abusing people, uh, just getting a feature from a person because they're hot at the moment and never working with them again. Those are things that a person that does. So you can't get mad if somebody bring that up in a battle or use that against you when you're battling. Yes, I get it. You're sad, though, but three, three stacks, bro. Come on, man. You're from the culture of all people, and you know better. You know better, Mr. Oh, the South got something to say when you're making a moment. Uh, choosing to, to have an indirect shot where you feel like you're not getting any love. I never he hear you ever in an interview, you, you just saying you recanting that statement. You, you said it and you meant it and you stood by it. So it's just all like when they, when they do these battles. Anytime when the motherfuckers mean something, they mean it and they stand by it, bro. So come on, man. Three sacks, you're better than that. You're OG and I get it that you're sad, bro. I get it. I get it that you're that you're sad though, but it's okay. It's it's okay. Like they're they're still gonna thrive. They're still gonna be dope. They're still gonna have fans. So it don't really matter. It really don't matter. Like they they will continue to thrive. And also too along the lines, he said, despite not enjoying the fuse, uh, he did like when Kendrick mentioned mentioned his name and like that. If you walk around that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. As a 49-year rapper, you're just happy to get a shout-out. But as a rapper, I noticed myself walking around with this stick. He told the publication, so it was a line for me, too. So I was trying to find a way to use it, but Kendrick used it, so I had to say, yeah, he got it. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, yeah. Yeah, man. No, but I feel like, for me, you walking around with that stick, you kind of give me, like, like Mahatma Gandhi vibes or Master Roshi from Dragon Ball Z. That 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 them the type of vibes that you that you're giving me. Take it off. <laughs> like for real, straight up. Like, like you're definitely definitely giving me that that type that type of type of vibe and that type of type of time, man. You know though. But 3K, don't be sad, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just battles and enduring has changed. Like even just putting out records, we gotta respect this. This is literally hands down by far. Probably the greatest battle that we ever witnessed because of the exchange. Them exchanging the records between each other that fast was crazy. It was dope. It was really, really dope. So don't be the old bitter, hating ass parent or um, saying, um, say. nigga, don't be sad, bro. No, don't be sad. All right, don't do that. All right. All right, and other news Neo has got a key to the city. And um, you know, have a have a have a day, uh, you know, pronounced of him. Neo had quite the welcome in his hometown of Las Vegas, kicking off his new residency and being honored with his own day as well, the key to the sea. Just two songs into his set at the Encore Theater at the Win Las Vegas on Wednesday, this past Wednesday that just happened. Mayor Caroline Caroline Goodman surprised the singer on stage and presented him with the key. Dubbing him Las Vegas on Superstar, good man thanked him for the philanthropy and the work that he's done for the city and was sure to note that his key was extra jewels than the one we gave Usher two months ago after all uh, he is a hometown here. Neil has returned to the Boys and Girls Club in Las Vegas many times throughout the years to get back to the youth, eventually resulting in an induction to the club's Alumni Hall of Fame. Now, I got a bone to pick with this, y'all. Oh, my God. Y'all may deem me as a hater or whatever, though, but I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Um, this is me. When Neo first came out back in, if I could recollect my memory, maybe like back in 05 or 06, the nigga never claimed Vegas. And honestly, and I like the record so, but a lot of us never knew that he was from the city. Like, we never knew this. Let's just let's just be honest. Like we we never knew this, and he never embraced the city like that. Like, and let, I'm just being real from my perspective. Everybody else has their different perspective, but I just have my perspective and what I was going through and witnessing. Like you know him coming into the scene uh, with his first single, "Stay with Me," um, with his first album that you know 
Sick of Love songs, had the song Mirror on there, which was fire. The first album, definitely a fucking classic, in my opinion. Super classic, though, but none of us didn't know that he was from Vegas because he didn't embrace it. At that time, the only people that we knew that was from Vegas that was really doing it, 702 and I-15, because I-15 was on a song with Soldier Boy called Soldier Clap. They were really embracing the city. I never heard me over say, hey, shut up, Vegas, this and that. I never, ever heard him say that. Never. So him getting a, a city, yeah, 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 city, uh, I don't know. Yes, this may come off as a hater, but I'm just giving y'all my perspective and just what I see. And as far as for the Boys and Girls Club, I don't know what Boys and Girls Club a lot know the, the the predominant ones that that really needed that really needed that the one up in Northtown. Everybody knows the one up in Northtown on Las Vegas Boulevard and Civic Center, definitely for sure. And the one in Naked City behind the Stratosphere are now called the Strat. I mean, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me. Granted, yeah, he did get a key. He got a he got a, a day named after him though. But other than the Boys and Girls Club, like. What have you done? Are you trying to break new artists? Like, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of a lot of dope people in the city, and I have yet to see him work or, you know, trying to break them or, you know, trying to lend a helping hand. That's just me. That's just me from what from what I observe and, and from what I see, though. But nonetheless, I mean, it's dope that he did get a city, uh, did, get a, did get a key to the city, my bad. And got a, a day named after him. Neil, all I just want you to do is just embrace our city more. You know what I'm saying? And embrace the people that's in the city. That's that's definitely all I want to see. That That's all I want to see, man. You do more of that, you okay in my book, though. But it, 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 I'm just being honest, man. If I can't be myself, what is it then? Like I'm not going to sit up here and like fake the fun for y'all. I'm just telling y'all from my perspective and... Me growing up in this city and from what I've seen, and I didn't see Neil repping the city like that. That's just me. That's just being real about it. You know, it is what it is. All right. Uh, man. It's a lot going on. Like, you know, uh, festival cities, you know, gearing up and stuff. Um, one Music Fest, Atlanta. Last year... Uh, who headlined it uh, last year. I mean, it was a lot of dope artists, so, but uh, J. Cole did Saturday and Kendrick Lamar did Sunday. And this year, uh, for One Fest, Cardi B, Gunna, Sexy Red, and more have been tapped in to perform at the 2024 edition One Music Fest in Atlanta. The festival lineup for the 15th annual takes place October 26th and 22nd at Piedmont Park in Atlanta, Georgia. Other artists set to perform is Glorilla, Nelly, T.I., Method Man, Red Man, Young Nudie, BX, The Plug, and among others. So, I mean, it's dope that it's going to be a mixture of the crowd where they're giving you some from our generation, some from the new class, and some, like, you know, from the previous generation. I think that's dope, though, man. But... Cardi B hitting the stage and she pregnant and she pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, it's going to be a minute before the baby is due though. But I mean, can she pull that off? That, that's all I want to know. You know what I'm saying? Being on that being on that stage like that though, man. But I mean, it's it's dope to see like, you know, Gunners hitting the stage. Um, sexy Red. And, and it's like for me, anybody can sound good on, a, on an album. But for me, like, I, I'm all about that stage presence. And I, and I love to see a person's stage presence. Glorilla, I heard she got a good stage presence. Nelly got a good stage presence. T.I. got a good stage presence. Method Man definitely have a good stage presence because I seen him last year when he was on tour for Wu-Tang and Nas and De La Soul here at the MGM uh, when they did the Wu-Tang and Nas tour. He definitely have a good stage presence. Red Man definitely have a good stage presence. And I definitely want to, like, for me, I'm, I'm excited to see what Young Nudie and BX The Plug do. Uh, my little brother put me on Young Nudie, and he's solid. And BX The Plug, definitely making a name for himself. So he is definitely, definitely super solid, you know what I'm saying? And he is amongst those, you know, in the ranks of, like, you know, 
doing doing what he's doing, man. Though, but uh, you know, uh, that's it for commentary of the culture, man. Like you know, um, three stacks. Don't be sad about that shit, bro. You know, it's a it's a dawn of a new era, man. Just keep that shit pushing, bro. Like like really really keep that shit pushing, Neo. Do shit more for the city, bro. That's all I'm going to say. I'm glad you got your key, but do more for the city. And Music One Fest in Atlanta, man. If you haven't been, go ahead and go. I haven't been to one, bro, because some, magically it falls after a month after Revolt World. And um, I'll be trying to get my funds back up after going to Atlanta, though. But, oh, yeah, if y'all don't know, Revolt World, September 20th through the 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia. Three days panels networking content creators influencers and performers man so if y'all want to like you know all my content creators and people want to network and want to take y'all shit to the next level go there man you'll never know who you run into man like really you'll never know who you run into and you might just get that big drop from that artist or you know get that big connection that you needed man so go ahead and go check out revolt world september 20th through this 22nd y'all won't be disappointed all right man uh time to get into can i kick it first up dog i remember the carolina blues came out was fire the chicago colorway came out was fire now we're getting a canary yellow og Air Jordan 1 off white. Um, this sneaker is said to be one of the most anticipated sneaker release of 2025. Virgil, unique version comes alive to his vibrant colorway, transforming the classic Air Jordan 1 silhouette into the modern masterpiece. This shoe upper vibrant canary yellow leather base instantly capturing the attention with the bold colorway contrast with the white leather overlays creating a striking visual appeal nike's signature swoosh rendered in the white extended beyond its usual placement adding to the shoe distinctive look so 2025 man i'm i'm happy that we're getting this sneaker because you know there have been a couple of fakes that floated here and there though man but i think it's dope that they're finally gonna release this and and more and i believe that he has more more models took because i know virgil he did a lot before he passed man though but i think this is dope and also too i think nike is putting that out to rebuttal on the travis scott low canary yellows and i think those is dope i might be getting those you know ain't no might yeah i am gonna get those i'll probably want to try to grab them uh by sometime at the end of this year you know what i'm saying so i think this is dope though like the swoosh on there is dope uh the panels the comfortability i don't know because i never had these all so, but uh my little brother he has the chicago off-white so so maybe i want to ask him on a scale of one to ten uh how the comfortability would be man though but um uh, i think this is a comp you know what i'm saying though uh will it be hype i don't know i don't know if it might have some hype around it because you see in this sneaker market that we're in right now a lot of shit is not selling out a lot of stuff is uh is sitting it's just certain shit that'll sell out that'll be a hit or a miss like the travis scott's i just named the the lows of canary yellows those were a hit strangely upon my fucking eyes so jordan lightning jordan 17s that was a fucking hit and most of you motherfuckers don't even really care about Jordan 17s. Y'all really only care about 1 through 13. So that was a shocker to me to see Jordan 17s to sell out the way they did. You know, so that was that was just awkward. Very awkward. But who knows, man. When 2025 come around, though, like, we're definitely going to see if this is a, this definitely a hit or a miss. So, but I believe, in my opinion, you know, um... It's definitely a cop for sure. sure uh, definitely for sure, for sure a cop. And I mean, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely, definitely not mad at it. Um, and I just think though, uh, the the overall though, like you know, uh, they're putting out um, more of a Virgil pieces and the stuff that he had did before he had passed. So I mean, I'm I'm definitely, I'm definitely here for it. 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm definitely, I am definitely, definitely all in for it. So, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? Ooh. All right. Next up. Next up. Definitely next up that we got. Um, that uh, that I'm really, really excited for. Um, it's a return. Return of the Nike Air Tech Challenge 2. So, the hot lava colorway to be exact of the Air Tech uh, Challenge 2 particularly has been a standout. This shoe came out back in 1990 and has a dynamic design, has been re-released several times with the most recent drop in 2019 to be exact and then such as other models as the LeBron 16 in 2019 and the Jordan brand Legacy 3112 in 2018 which both for them fall from the hot lava colorway thing which I think that was dope but in 2024 this edition of the AirTech Challenge 2 hot lava promised to be a treat for the new and the old fans fans with the harmonics blend of the phantom hot lava black silver and pale ivory colorway you know what I'm saying and the shoe's white leather base is complemented by the, the perforations on the panels ensuring breathability. And on the sides with the speckled detailing, the swoosh logo, the tone branding, and the inner tone placed throughout the design while Nike branding graces the heels with the rubber outsole and a mix of aforementioned colors completes the look. So, we're getting this sneaker at the end of this month of August, August 30th. And it's gonna retail at $150. Not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Is the hype beast checking for this? Take it off. No. Is the resellers checking for this? Take it off. No. Not at all. And I'm happy that they're not. They're not checking for that, man. Because I mean it gives us real sneakerheads a chance to go ahead and grab these though man but the but just a picture of them man like they just look so saucy i've never had a pair before though but um one of the past members of lace rom shout out to my boy chris hella goes man he is a huge fan of these sneakers and i know he had a, uh had a couple of these in his stash definitely man so i mean i'm i'm excited i'm definitely definitely excited to see the release to see the release of this sneaker and see what people gonna do with them, man. Like definitely, definitely what's gonna do with them, man. Like, like for real. So I think I definitely think it's I definitely think it's dope. And I'm here for that release. Definitely here for that release, man. So I mean, like, like it's gonna it's gonna be dope. It's, it's definitely definitely gonna be dope, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shoot. Uh, but um, this. That we went over was just amazing, man. Um, the return of the off-white Jordan one, but in a canary yellow. You know what I'm saying? Another off-white that I think they might need to drop, man. They need to drop that bread for off-white. I know that has been circling around uh, to get your hands on on a real authentic player. I want to say it's like three, four thousand. But also too, there has been some fakes circling around on, on that one too. Oh my God! But I would love um, the people over there off white to actually do a general release of that brand for. Like I think that would be dope too. And just seeing the, another re-release of the AirTag Challenge Twos. You know what I'm saying? An OG colorway, hot lava. I mean, I think that is dope. That is very, very dope. And it's only retailing again at $150. So with tax, you'll probably pay like $160, maybe $165 at the most, which ain't too bad. Which definitely, definitely ain't too bad, man. So I mean, I'm definitely, I am definitely, definitely here for that. Like super, super here for that, man. And um, I mean, that's it, man. You know, for Can I Kick It? So, all right uh latest drops we're gonna definitely get into these albums uh next next episode for sure though but definitely gonna play some snippets uh so friday drops definitely friday drops that we had got this week definitely definitely had got this week uh we had got let's see we got larry june doing it for me Sugar Honey Ice Tea by Lotto, The Hood Poet by Polo G. 
and Ultra 85 by Logic, Summertime Butch, Beanie the Butcher, and the Soprano family. So first, let's we're gonna give a little snippet from um from this little Larry June. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna get into it, man. Uh we're gonna snip it with this little Magnum PI. Like you like you know, and I'm definitely, definitely here for it. Bitch, I'm up for the play with me. For some furniture, I keep outside. I stop by the shades, though. Then I clean my ride. Take the shit off the seat, you know they bippin' and shit. I never posted this one, so they don't know it's my whip. I'm all on FaceTime with her, I'm kinda feeling this bitch. Love how the bitch talk, it's so appealing and shit. You heart broke, constant play mouth, killing the bitch. I'm free that, free that. Mind you, that was just the second track, man. So I can't wait to review this album with y'all so we could talk about this next week so we could really see if it's a you know definitely hit or miss and then up next man we got the uh lotto sugar honey ice tea first album can't front it was solid definitely solid though but let's see like let's see what she do with this one man on the sugar honey ice tea all right we're gonna check this this track out called blick something let's see let's see because when she gets sticky what the fuck they're blicky yeah, yeah. I ain't got no blicky, boy. Step for me. Throw up your set for me. Get in the field, go get that check for me. That pistol get that pussy wet, now come have sex with me. Please, son. Please, son. Hit, son. If you love me. Please, son. Please, son. Hit, son. If you love me. That gangsta shit, it turn me on. Yeah. That tutu ain't gon' do that nanny, get me out my thong. Okay, that's something, not bad, not bad. But I ain't shooting a nigga uh, for you, though. <laughs> I'm not blinking nobody for you. So that's out. You can forget about that. You fine, but I'm not. That just goes for any woman. I'm not shooting a nigga for you. Uh -uh, you can forget about that. <laughs> But no, though, um, that's another one I'm looking forward to getting into, man, though. But um, Logic. People think this man is corny, though, but I actually like Logic. I fuck with Logic. I think Logic is a dope rapper. That's just me. And, and his music kind of don't never disappoint. He only had one disappointing album in his scene, and that shit was called, like, Confessions. Let me see what the name was at. Oh, yeah. Confessions. Yeah, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. That album was so fucking terrible. That was that was Logic's by worst his his worst album though. But man, uh, Ultra eighty five. I mean, I mean, hey, you doing this thing though? So let's 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 give a little snippet into this, man. Like we got to. We're supposed to watch five hundred days of summer. Uh, I brought some McAllen eighteen. I brought some Jordan SBs and six turns over. Says, hey, I think I got a beat for Ultra eighty five. He plays it, logic goes Just crazy, and next thing you know, history's made. I'm Paul Rodriguez, and I approve this message. <laughs> hey, yo, this that Tony Hawk Pro Skater soundtrack type beat. Welcome to Ultra 85. What's up, what's happening, bitch, we live Probably thought you never see the day of Ultra 85 It's been a minute, but baby, yeah, now we in it What's that? The past, the present, the future, and yes, the beyond I know you thought it was over, but you know that now it's on I was scared for years to try to do this album How you follow up a classic, what's the outcome? Failure and tragedy, now everybody's mad at me Cause I ain't making carbon copy of my last shit Fuck the past, we passed it, boy snapping like he elastic Listen, feel the freedom You can take him out the field and lead him But you can't make him drink, bitch, I'm being me The fuck you think this is, I am, I mean I am mean, everything that they said I wasn't We cooking, but ain't no oven they they Okay, giving me that jazzy vibe I like that I like that I can't wait to indulge into that album though, man But, I mean, his last project that he had um, He blessed us with um, I mean, it was dope uh, The name, What was the name of that last project that he had gave us? Uh, College Park, yeah College Park was dope College Park was fucking dope, though So, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm definitely... Definitely here for that, though, man. You know, and then Benny, he definitely doing the scene. And, um, you know, 
Well, with the Soprano family, man. So let's get into a little quick little sample of this. You know what I'm saying? Time, Don't believe everything Don't you see. Like Shit, funny like Black that. Black Soprano family. These are the real ones. Ah, we doing better than we did last year. year. Good job, man. Let's go. I jumped on the road, the riches, and then the stress came. The stress came. A good plug in this shit, like an express lane. I'm talking press cane. Press That's cane. cool, but we don't do finesse games. Uh -huh. We never hand connects and correct change. Nah. Been the most consistent this decade. Yeah. I'm a ball constricted to next mate. Niggas choke when the best came. That's me. The life of Hefe. And let's say y'all niggas do make it this far. I pray it's more money and less fame. Target on my back. I'm living life. Okay, Benny, you talking that shit, bro. I like that. That's another one I can't wait to indulge into, man. So I mean, we're gonna get we're gonna definitely get into that logic, that Benny, that Larry June, and that Lotto uh next episode for sure. Definitely for sure though. But that's what all dropped. That's definitely what all dropped that came out um this coming week though, man. So I mean like definitely uh you guys go on ahead and, and pick those pick those albums up and really listen to them. Like definitely, definitely listen to them, man though. But uh I just want to just say to y'all, man, like, thank you. Like, really, really thank you for being here with us, man. Like, for real. Like, we're, like, going to continue to to do great things. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't leaving. We're not leaving. We're just, like, we've been here, and we're going to continue to be here, though. But I just want to just tell you, thank you to all my subscribers, man. We are sitting at 552. We're on that road to 1K, and which is dope. And then after when we get to that 1K, we're going to get to that 5K. And then after 5K, 10K. And after 10K, 15, 20. After 20, 25. And then next thing you know, next round, so we'll be sitting at 50,000 subscribers. So I believe it and I speak that. We will have that many, man, because, man, we're just here giving y'all insight on the culture that we definitely love, man. Though, But also, too, man, like... Like, you know, we see the Olympics going on and everything. Shout out to all the B-girls and the B-girls that's in the Olympics. Because as some of y'all know and some of y'all don't know, prior to me doing the podcast, man, uh, I was a former B-boy myself. Still a B-boy, always, forever. Danced for like 20 plus years or so to see breaking in the Olympics is pretty dope. And if y'all don't understand that, go do your history, do your research, man, and stop being a fucking hater, like for real. And it's called breaking, b-boy and b-girl, not break dancing, not the shit that y'all would call it in 1983, 84, and 85. It is not break dancing. It is breaking, breaking, and the dance have evolved so much, and it's still growing. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the USA, man. It's a lot more work need to be done in the USA though. But as for overseas, man. Props to y'all, man, supporting the dance 100%. USA need to get on board with that shit, man, though. But, yeah. Uh, but, anyway, man, I just want to just say thank you. Y'all go ahead and tell a friend that tells a friend that tells another friend. You know what I'm saying? And go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Podbay, Podbean, Google Play. Spotify, Apple, yeah, yeah, you name it, and we own it, you name it, and we own it, <sighs> you name it, and we own it, but yeah, man, we name it, we're on it, bro, but until then, this is your boy Skeeter Steve, Lace Rounds for the culture and by the culture, we out, peace.